chances. Fred Cook going for goal 100 for the season. The personality player of the BFA, Fred Cook, lining up for goals 100. There's the kick, and it's a goal. 100 goals to Fred Cook. And have a look at that crowd coming onto the ground. Great uh, tribute to Fred Cook. He's one of the most popular players in football today. And uh, 16 to 1, Dennis Walter with you. Mark Genge is uh, staying around because Mark is a footy historian. And Fred Cook, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Dennis. Fabulous Fred's the name of the book. Yes. Um, Turbulent Fred at times. Well, um, I use my powers for good instead of evil now. I, and, <laughs> That's good. Uh, and I've put it into a book. And uh, more importantly, Dennis, uh, over the years we get these football footballers that you know, write their book and... You know, uh, like Royce Hart wrote, who's the greatest in our forward on his 19 or something, you know. But uh, <laughs> you've had the experience. <laughs> um, I wasn't happy with some of the things, but I had to put everything into the book. You know, the things I weren't happy about, like uh, not the drugs so much, but, you know, I used to give my wife a clip because I thought it was acceptable back in those days and. Um, you know, I just had to put it in. Other boys just didn't do that. You know, didn't didn't get to the raw story. And I think people like the raw story. Well, it's the truth. It's it's the truth. Is it true that Sam um, nearly got shot when he was in your company? Sam Newman is that frightened. He sleeps with the light on. But on this occasion, I must say this about Sam: he, he never take. He wouldn't take a backward step. He wouldn't not take a backward step. And uh, going back over thirty years, he. Um, yeah, I, I could have got shot, and then uh, when he saved my life, he could have got shot. I prefer the second, you know, but... Fred, Sam can get himself into trouble. He didn't need you to help him. Oh, As we've seen in the years that have ensued. Well, he... Uh, he's my friend. <laughs> he's my friend. And a good friend, too. Oh, yeah. I want to mention uh, fabulous Fred, Fred Cook's, uh, some of his achievements. He, he played in the VFA right through the 70s to the mid-80s, kicked over 1,300 goals. And there was seven times, Fred, where you kicked more than 100 goals in a season. And I've, I've seen footage of, of one moment when you kicked 100 goals and lots of people ran onto the ground, patted you on the, the back. What, what, what did that mean to you being, you know, the, the, the role model of the, the VFA? More importantly, it was an obligation to the kids because they were the most important part of the crowd. You know, and I can remember on one occasion it was playing six inches of mud and it raining at the end of the game. I had my face cut open and my dad was at the race saying, Fred, get inside, the doctors want to sew you up. I said, I can't leave these kids there, you know, because I come from that background that you know, I was their only guiding light at the end of the, end of the week. Uh, I never smoked cigarettes in front of the kids. I had a... With a Channel O, Channel 10 uh, camera, don't put the camera on me when I'm having a smoke. I'll do anything you want down the track. And, and they were pretty good like that. Now, that brings back great memories of Phil Gibbs calling and uh, the, the, the VFA footy, which was great. Your idol was Teddy. Um, but when did you, do you remember when you first met Teddy? Um, oh, I followed him as a kid from, I went to football with my old man, sort of on the beer cans, that sort of thing. But. Um, um, I'd had he, got his autograph probably only about 500 or 1,000 times. Got into trouble with Mum on Thursday nights, not coming home for tea on time because I was up watching them train. And when I finally did get to an invitation to Foot, Footscray, I remember I walked out in the ground and I said, uh, pleased to meet you, Mr Whitten. I couldn't think of anything else to say. You did know? you get the dynamic handshake? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He, had it, he had it back in those days. He did. He was a he was a great man. And he did, in that era of players, they did that thing of um, grabbing your hand and then that, pulling you slightly towards them, which pulled you off balance. Didn't, didn't Probably Mark, didn't pull you off balance. Didn't, didn't Mark Latham introduce that to John Howard? No, he just, yes, he did. He just uh, copied it off you, people like you and Teddy. <laughs> Fred, prior to the VFA, you, as you mentioned, Footscray, you played with Footscray for a, for a couple of years. Why didn't things work out there? Oh, I think, uh, to sum it up quickly, they didn't have the capacity to nurture a 19-year-old. I had no idea what... what like today it's a totally different game. There was no thought about, you know, where you're going to work after you finish football. And incidentally, in 1968, I played every league game for Footscray. And I played in two or three night games, one night premiership. And pay night, I got $875 for, for the year. And Ted Bitten, arguably the best footballer in the country... 
being kept in case you got 1300 bucks for the year. That's how the game's changed slightly. 1300 for Teddy Whitten. Yes. Uh, 969 693, are you happy to take some calls? Yes. yes uh, John wants to have a chat. Hello, John. How are you there, Dennis? Uh, how are you, Freddie? Johnny, do I owe you money? Now, there's two times to remind you of. Number one, you and Sammy Newman helped us out of Campbell Football Club. Oh. And, uh, you stayed there for hours with us and it cost us a bottle of Bacardi. I've still got a videotape of that. You wouldn't believe that. Have you really? It was, yeah. a mag- it was a magnificent night. Yeah, we had the uh, we had the had the girls out there that night. Um, was that John? Are we on the same wavelength there? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, maybe we won't go any further no. with that one. Uh, Andy, good afternoon. How are you, Dennis? Go ahead. Dennis, I remember Cookie years and years ago, and so was he. he used to call into the Yarraville Citizens Club for a quiet beer of a Friday and Saturday night. And I always remember that he was very, very pleasant to talk to. I was a member down there because my father was a member. Back in those days, you had to be nominated to become to get into the club and uh, you have to be first and second. And it was a ritual to go and have it around a snooker on a Friday night. Uh, it harks back to uh, much more simple times, uh, Fred. Ken, good afternoon. Yes, um, Fred, what was your favourite uh, VFA team? Well, I've got to say, it's just a trick question. I've got to say Port Melbourne. Um, I was there for a quick 15 or 16 years. Um, but, yeah, it had to be Port Melbourne. It had to be Port Melbourne. And uh, the six premierships I played in, I was very fortunate I didn't play in any, any, any losing ones. Fred, were, were Port Melbourne like Collingwood were in the, the VFL? In, in terms of loving or hating them as either one? Were Port More, Melbourne like that? Yes, of course. Um, um, I, I, I was never a fan of Collingwood. You know, I would have got an Al Qaeda membership before I got Collingwood one, and uh, but the, we hated them because they were so good. You know, they're so they're so tough and they're so strong, and they they just sat at the, the pinnacle of what it was all about, Collingwood Football Club, and they had some good players. God, and is is that what people thought of Port Melbourne also because they were so successful? A lot of people didn't like them. Yes, yeah, yes, of course. Um, um, we weren't arrogant, but we we never. I never say we went out in the game of football. Ex- good sides expect to win, poor sides hope to win. We we were expected to win, you know. Occasionally, when we got beaten, we we were taken aback by that. Can you stay around? Yeah, I can. A lot of people want to talk to you, and I've got lots of questions for you, Pat. Uh, Pat umpired you, Fred Cook. Uh, Pat, good afternoon. G'day, uh, Dennis, and g'day, Fred. Pat Abbott's the name um, uh, no, under the one umpire system. And what a, what a great player Fred was. And a true gentleman on the field, I must say, to umpires as well. A wonderful team and a wonderful player. Who wrote your material for you? <laughs> 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 th- thank you very much for that. No, no, great days, Fred. Yes. Fantastic. When we were talking, uh, thank you, Pat. When we were talking about uh, interviewing you this morning, we discovered some vision that's up on uh, YouTube. We're putting it up at 3rw.com.au of, uh, I think it was a final in 1970. Yeah, the VFA grand Six. final in 76. God. And there was an all-in, if anyone wants to see an old-fashioned footy stash, this is pr- about as good as it gets. The... Second quarter went for nearly 50 minutes. Second quarter of, 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 in the game, unbelievable, because of the punch ups and uh, the umpires getting knocked out. And well, the umpire was in the middle of this one. Yeah. Not uh, by choice, I don't think. No, no. Um, I don't remember much. I was asleep. I was in the, uh, the, the, my opponent of the day, Alfred Busey, said, um, if we've seen much on Thursday night, he said, if Cook makes a fool of me, I'm going to knock him out. Now, he told everyone else, but if he told me, I we could have worked something out. And he did. He did. He, uh, I, had a, I had a flap of meat under my... I could breathe through this hole in my face. It wasn't my mouth. And, uh, and I, I went in at half-time, and I, I, I could have been at a hockey match. And I got in there, and I'm lying on a table, and the doctor was sewing up putting these bag needles in my face, and my dad was holding one arm, and the head trainer was holding the other arm, and old man Goss walked past. I said, who are you going to play full forward now? I'm sorry about this. I didn't see you coming. He said, what's wrong with you? You don't run on your chin. <laughs> my dad had tears in his eyes. and I, I, I had to get off the deck. I, There's a quote. You don't run on your chin. More with Fred Cook after the break and your calls. 9 6 Fred Cook on his own in the goal square. Takes the mark and kicks a goal. Nine goals to Fred Cook. He's kicked 125 goals for the year. There he is, century goal kicker supreme, Fred Cook. 
At 4 to 1, uh, Fred Cook is with us. Uh, the book is called Fabulous Fred. Sam mentioned it on the footy show last night. The Strife and Times of Fred Cook by Paul Amy and forward by Sam Newman. Paul, good afternoon. Oh, good afternoon. G'day, Freddie. How are you? I'm well, thanks, Paul. That's the way. Um, footy's changed a lot, but some of the things still stay the same. You know, um, what advice would you offer... An 18-year-old, you know, a drafter going into the AFL um, these days with with everything, all the pressures and, you know, that you, know, you had pressures, you had highs and lows and, and I suppose so that the young guys these days. So what sort of advice could you offer? It's, it's pretty hard to put common sense in the young kid's brain, but I would just take it, take it all in and analyse it. Um, and, and you've got to... The career could be one game or 100 games, but... I'd be looking for something to do after a game of football. I would be looking that something's going to feed you, to, you know, 60 or 70 years of age. And um, I, I think the kids are getting the right guidance now, but uh, with with all the publicity they get, they can get a big head a bit too early, and but God, that, that can bring you down. How tough was Fred Cook? According to the book, Fred, you had a heart attack during a pre-season game in 1972 and kept playing. Yeah, I disappoint a lot of people. I pulled through on that one. Um, <laughs> now, I was playing, I don't know who we were playing, Brunswick, I think, in a, in a practice match, and I had aches and pains at half time. And little did I know, I was having a heart attack, and I played the la- last half of, of football, and I couldn't even sit down and have a beer with my old man after anyway. And I ended up in hospital, and um, I was there for a quick six weeks, and my whole world just collapsed around me after that. Because football was, was my life back in those days. Um, we have to ask the obvious question: How did you fall in with the wrong crowd? What was the what was the process? Or were they did they idolise you, and the, or did they find you? Well, I suppose yeah, they found me. I, I remember a, a policeman pulled me up about two o'clock one morning. I was over in Richmond, and uh, he said, "What are you doing hanging around with that filth? You know why? Why?" Uh, he said, they're, "Do you realise they're only using you for social acceptance and?" and it didn't ring a, a bell until many years later, and uh, uh, that's where I, yes, where I, I didn't realise then that I had a problem with drugs. And you know, we see it today with Neville Rand's story. You know, I can under, I can understand what, what they're going through. You know, because you drop for the fairies, you just don't know, you don't care. Another Paul. Good afternoon. Yeah, good day, guys. Yeah, pretty. I remember when you and a young. Guy came around to our place in Black Rock years ago, 18 years ago. You, but you weren't invited. You come through the window and you stole our television. <laughs> Did you ever give it back, Fred? No, what size was it? <laughs> Wasn't a flat screen, was it? <laughs> <laughs> Paul, thank you very much for your call. Um, do you remember doing that, Fred? No. So it wasn't you? No, no, he's probably right, but it wasn't me. No, it definitely wasn't you. It was a bloke who looked like you. Mark Inge, thank you. Fred thank Cook, you. Uh, great to have you on the program. So much interest from listeners. and uh... Bernie Barmer, Bernie the attorney. If I don't give him a mention, you know, I throw him £100, I think, from his, my first court appearance. There you are, Bernie Barmer, you have been mentioned. The book is called Fabulous Fred, The Strife and Times of Fred Cook. Friday lunch, after the news.